All right, I want to share one of my favorite advanced analytics techniques in Excel. This is a five-star expert level tip. What we're going to do is build our own Monte Carlo simulation model entirely within Excel. No VBA, no macros, just straight up cell formulas and data tables. Now, Monte Carlo simulation, it's typically used to predict the probability of some future outcome or outcomes based on repeated random sampling. In other words, we randomly simulate the same outcome over and over and over and over again, and then analyze the resulting array of results. So what better way to demonstrate Monte Carlo simulation than to build our own roulette simulator in Excel? So the way this works is that you can place a certain type of bet, red or black, even or odd, specific numbers, and each bet is associated with a given payout. So after placing your bet, determining a wager, we're using ran between to essentially randomize or simulate a spin of the roulette wheel. In this particular case, we've bet $10 on red. The result is the red number 23, so we won 10 bucks. But the goal isn't just to sit here and randomly spin over and over and over again. What we want to create is something like this, where we're actually recording the results of a number of simulations, in this case 10 spins, and then evaluating those results and summarizing them with basic stats functions. So here we're calculating the total gain or loss, the number of spins, the number of wins versus losses, the win percentage, average return per spin, and basic max and min. And the tool that we're using to actually drive these simulations is Excel's data table. So we're gonna head to our data tab, drop into our what if analysis tools, and use the data table to create and record as many simulations as we determine. Now, obviously we're using this to kind of create something fun and interesting, but there are a number of very serious, very realistic use cases where this could come into play. For one, randomly simulating a business model thousands of times in order to understand the probability of something like a profit versus a loss. Or to build on that, creating predictive models that actually can account for a given degree of uncertainty for one or more model inputs, like what interest rates will do in the future or how supply costs will change. So this is an incredibly powerful data science and analytics tool that we can play with and learn about right here in the familiar Excel environment. So let's go ahead and jump into our pro tip workbook and practice building some of these simulations. All right, so if you'd like to follow along, head to your table of contents, Scroll on over to the analytics tips here in purple, and we're gonna jump into our Monte Carlo simulation demo. Go ahead and link straight out to that tab, and here we'll find our roulette simulator. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with the game of roulette, this is what the table looks like. You've got 36 numbers, half black, half red, as well as two green numbers, zero and double zero. So the dealer will spin a wheel that contains all 38 slots, associated with each of those numbers. Now, as far as bets are concerned, you can place bets in a number of different ways, which you can see here in this drop-down cell. You can bet on individual numbers, which are the most uncommon results, and therefore pay out the highest, in this case, $35 to one on your bet. You can also bet on the first third of numbers, the first 12, second 12 or third 12, the first, second or third column of numbers, the first half, second half, even numbers, odd numbers, red or black. So as a simple example, let's say we bet on black, we can input a certain bet amount, let's say $10. This payout tells us that a bet on black pays out one to one. So if we win, we get $10, if we lose, we lose the $10 that we wagered. So from here, we can press the F9 calculate button or head to our formula tab and click the calculate now button to simulate different spins of the wheel. So as you can see, we've bet on black, so any red result means that we lose our bet, down $10. Any black result means that we win $10 because of the one-to-one -one payout. Now what we really care about is the information down here, our simulation data and our simulation results. So right here, this is where we're gonna use a data table to actually spin the wheel 10 times virtually and record the results of each spin here in column C. And I've already populated some functions in column F to summarize those results. 
I've created a named range called spins, and we're using a basic sum to calculate total gain loss. We're taking the max of column B for the number of spins, using countif to calculate the wins, and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and start with a small number of simulations, just 10 spins. So what we're gonna do here is select this entire range from B15 through C25. And remember that when we use data tables, one of the cells in the selection needs to contain the formula that we're simulating, which in this case is the spin result housed in cell I9. So I've simply referenced that result right here in C15 so that we can select the entire reference as we insert our data table. So head to your data tab here. We're gonna to go to the what if analysis options, click data table at the bottom. And here we've got our two criteria, our row input and our column input. Now we don't have any variable values that we're testing in rows, so that's obviously gonna be blank. But here's where things get a little bit strange. We do have different values here in our column, so we need some sort of a column input, but these values don't actually feed into any input that impacts our result. In other words, we're not actually plugging the number one or two or three into some formula input. We just want to randomize that formula a certain number of times. And to make Excel realize that, all we have to do is reference a blank cell. So cell B14 is completely blank. We can use that for a column input and press OK. And there you go. Once we've done that, Excel is now iterating through this data table. You can see it's created a single array containing all of the results, and it's recorded a series of results, wins and losses, in this case based on 10 different spins of the wheel. So in this first example, we're betting a $10 wager on black. We spun it 10 times. We ended up winning $40 because we hit black seven times we hit red or green, meaning we lost three times. So our win probability was 70% and our average return per spin was $4. So let's go ahead and try another simulation by just simply calculating now. Okay, this time we lost 20, win percentage was only 40%. Again, now we lost 60, we only won twice out of 10 spins. Spin again, lost 60, lost 40, we broke even that time, lost 20. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of variability in terms of that win probability. Now, we know the actual stats here. We know the real probabilities. The odds of winning a red or black placement in roulette are equal to 18 winning results out of 38 possible results, which equals 47.4%. And the reason this win probability that we see here in cell F19 is bouncing around so wildly and not even really targeting in on that true probability is that we're dealing with a very, very small sample size. Anything can happen in 10 spins. You could win 10 out of 10, you could lose 10 out of 10. So what I'd like to do here is repeat the process, not for 10 spins, but for 10,000 spins and see what happens. Now, keep in mind, you can't just delete an individual cell from your data table, which is an array. You have to select the whole thing, starting with C16. I'm going to control shift arrow down and then delete and i'm also going to delete these spin index numbers here and little pro tip here i'm going to select the number one hover over the right corner of the cell hold the right click on my mouse as i drag down and back up and when i release i'll get this secret menu here that has a series option at the bottom and what i want to do is fill a series in this column i want to step in integers of one, and I want to stop at 10,000. So press OK, and there we go. If I control arrow down, you'll see it's created a series all the way down to 10,000 spins. Now, same process as before. I'm going to select this range, control shift arrow down to grab the entire range of cells, data, what if analysis, data table, no row input, column input equals blank cell B14 and press OK. And now it's going to think for a little while because it's iterating 10,000 times and recording the result. And let's see what happens. There we go. So we're making the same bet as before, we're betting $10 on black. The only difference is instead of making that bet 10 times, 
we just made that bet 10,000 times. It was a very long night at the casino. And the result that we see here is a total loss of $4,980. You can see we spun it 10,000 times. We won 4,751 times. And take a look at that win probability. Remember what we said the actual true probability for this bet is? 47.4%. Here we see a result of 47.5. And if we go ahead and spin it one more time by hitting calculate now, remember it's going to take a few seconds, usually 10 seconds or so, to actually run through the simulation. And there you have it. So 47.6. This time we lost $4,900. And let's just do one more calculation. Give it a few seconds to run. There we go, our third result. We only lost 3,400 that time. We had a higher than normal win probability, but still very, very close to the true percentage or true odds of winning. So what I'm actually gonna do here is select that entire range here and delete that data table just because I don't want to slow things down here. And let's go ahead and just delete these index values down to 10,000. And we're kind of back where we started. So from here, feel free to play around, try different types of bets, try different bet amounts, simulate different numbers of spins. It's totally up to you from here. But that's your basic crash course in creating a Monte Carlo simulation model in Excel.